All right, what up YouTube? Today I'm going to be shooting a video on uh, some of the tricks that I use to tame my monitors. They're not tricks, they're just techniques that I found work for me over the years. Um, uh, I'm going to be showing some stuff on my Argus. Uh, my Blackthroat, he's, he's pretty good, so it's, it's almost kind of pointless to show taming tips uh, for him. Um, but everything that I do for my Argus, I also do for uh, all, all my lizards, really, and anything that I, that I own. Um, I've gone through some trial and error, error as far as uh, taming goes. Um, like I said, I've been keeping reptiles all my life, so um, definitely had some failures, got bit, had some aggressive animals that have been successfully tamed down. Um, but as I got through it, I learned what worked um, and what didn't work, obviously. Um, so let me let me go walk you through a couple of the things that I, that I like to do. Um, first of all, is time. It, it's going to take time. Don't expect to get a monitor and just get lucky and, and have an awesome monitor and then form this bond with your monitor without trying. You got to put the time in. You got to put the work in. Uh, and th and that's got to be a daily thing until that monitor trusts you fully. Um, you got to spend. I w I would spend with a new monitor. I would spend a minimum of an hour a day with them. Uh, and, and that's not just uh, doing the taming stuff, that's interacting in his cage, cleaning out his water. Um, just doing stuff like that and, and not making it a negative experience for him um, goes a long way when taming monitors. So um, one of the things that I like to do is uh, touch them, pet them, stroke them while I feed them. Put the bowl of food um, either in the cage or wherever it is that you're going to be feeding them. But interact with them while you're feeding them. Don't just feed them and, and watch them eat and, and not interact with them. It's a good time to, where, to get your hands on that monitor where he's a little bit distracted from you and not too keyed in on just your actions. He's, he's pretty going to be pretty keyed in on eating. So um, it's a good time to you know put your hands on him and let him know that you don't mean him any harm. Um, another thing that I don't like to do is uh, too much force handling. Sometimes, uh, you know, picking him up when he doesn't want to be picked up is, is acceptable, but if you make that a habit, he's going to know that you're interacting with him in a negative way when he doesn't want you to. Chances are, especially with something like a Argus monitor or a Nile monitor, that he may never want you to interact with him, uh, but there will be times that he will tolerate it a lot more than others. Um, they can be moody. They're like people. They have their good days and their bad days. So. Uh, let's see if this is Loki's good day. You fix your necklace, babe? All right, so here's Loki. He is uh, looking around his cage. He he's, wants some food. Um, I'm going to open it up and feed him and show you what I do when I feed him. You've probably seen it in one of my other videos of my daughter touching him um, and me touching him. See, instantly, he's an Argus monitor, so instantly he's going to, um, you know, react negatively when I open the cage. Um, you can see that the tip of his tail isn't super curled, so he's not super pissed off. I know he's uh, puffing up a little bit, but you can see that he's licking around. He's interested in, in what it is that I'm doing because he knows that I bring food. So let's see if he'll let me actually touch him. Oh, you're okay, buddy. You're all right. See that tail curling? He's getting a little bit more aggressive, but uh, he usually doesn't bite, so I'm not too worried. You're all right, buddy. You're okay. You're okay. You're all right. Okay, come here. You're good, bud. Come on. Let's eat. So I'm going to get him some food, and I'll show you the difference when he has the food there. So he's got the food. And see how he's way, way less aggressive when he's got the food. He's keyed in on the food. He's not worried about you touching him too much. At this point, he already trusts me. This may be harder to do in the beginning stages, but work at it and uh, it'll pay off, I promise you. A another thing you can do is uh, wear a t-shirt around your house while you're working, you know, sweating it a little bit, maybe wear, wear a t-shirt to sleep, and then ball it up, or you can lay it flat, doesn't really matter. Uh, but put it under his, in his hide. Wherever he sleeps at night, wherever he feels safe, goes to feel safe, put your scent in there. Take a pair of socks, doesn't matter if it's a t-shirt or socks, uh, socks are kind of funky, so uh, I'd like to use a t-shirt uh, more than socks, but um, do what you got to do, put your scent in there, um, let them know that your scent means safety. So you can see just how tame he is, 
when he's being fed. This does happen sometimes when he's not being fed, but uh, usually he protests quite a bit more. And um, another thing, read your monitor signs. Um, get to know your monitor, and uh, most monitors have things that they do um, to let you know that they're upset. They'll turn sideways to give you the biggest profile they have. They'll inflate their throats and hiss. That's an obvious one. Another one is, like I mentioned before, uh, the tail curling around. If it's if their tail is uh, curled pretty tightly, that means they're getting ready to whack you. It's it's like loading a gun. They're just uh, cocking it. So, um, you know, if their tail curls up, back off a little bit. Give them some time. Come back later and, and try again. You got to be patient with these guys, especially with something like an Argus monitor. Um, but these little tips, you know, spending time um, stroking them while he's eating um, the t-shirt thing, and uh, talking to him even really, really kind of calms down, calms him down. I noticed. Um, what's something else that I like to do? Uh, just open his cage up. I like to open his cage up and stand in front of it, um, talk to him. Not even touch him. Just talk to him. Put my arms in the cage. Put put my arm close to him. He'll start to hiss and, and curl his tail. So I'll back off a little bit until I see that tail and curl, which is usually just a matter of inches if that you know if I back up even if I'm right in his face two inches away if I back up just one inch he realizes okay he's not he's not coming at me anymore he's going the opposite way um, and then I'll leave my hand there for a while and he'll start to lick it and, and crawl around um, he, he hasn't crawled up my arm to try to get out of the cage or anything like that yet but um, you can see how well this works this Heading. And you know this this is good for you too. I mean, if you want to interact with your Argus monitor, um, feeding time is a great time because this is going to be the most positive uh, um, interaction that you're going to get with him probably, especially when they're when you're just getting them and they're young. I heard they uh, they tame out quite a bit when they're older um, and they they accept a little bit more of your presence um, without protesting so much, without all the hissing and all that good stuff. But um, I've never had a Argus monitor. This is my first, so. Um, like I said, I'm going through trial and error with him too. It's it's all been successful so far because he's tried to make everything as positive as possible um, for him. Um, and, and that's 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 big for aggressive monitors, or not even aggressive monitors, but fly D monitors. Um, uh, monitors like Argus monitors and Niles, um, making those experiences positive is, is going to pay off big time. So if you guys have any tips for me um, on taming Argus, I'm more than willing to try just about anything unless it's you know comes off negative right off the bat but uh let me show you odin now i'm gonna close loki's cage up you've been a good boy bud you've been a good boy i like to tell him he's a good boy you know um try to use the same language with him when you talk to him um if you're doing something positive if he does something positive let him know say good boy or girl or whatever it is you want to tell him but uh keep it simple you know you don't want to throw big words at him or, or long sentences just uh, a few things that that he's gonna recognize like good boy good boy when I pet him good boy good boy see he's so he's gonna hear that good boy while he's being fed and uh, he may associate that's just what I'm thinking anyways uh, he may associate it with a with a positive thing so um, give it a shot tell me if it works for you guys tell me what you guys do um, let me give you a little bit of uh, taming on Odin Odin's pretty pretty good already but we'll see how he's feeling today Good boy, Loki. Sorry for the shitty video. Closing up the cage. All right, Odin. What's up, buddy? <laughs> what are you doing? You hungry? How you doing? Can you smell? No biting. No biting. Be good. Good boy. Good boy, Odin. Alright, here's your food. Come here. Come here, fat guy. Alright. So what they're eating is uh, just a ground turkey, egg, and vitamin and calcium mix. Um, and some king worms. Hey, buddy. Good boy. Um, oh, another quick tip for you guys. If you guys have a black throat or any monitor that likes to defecate um, in the same area every time, remove whatever substrate you have in there and throw a bed of sand in there. It works 
fantastically, just like a litter box. Um, he That's the only corner he uses to go to the bathroom. And uh, it's super easy to clean his cage now. So uh, figure out where he's going to the bathroom. If it's the same spot every time, put some sand there, you're good to go. Um, again, I'm just petting him while, uh, while he eats. Um, he doesn't mind it at all. He, he actually seems to enjoy being pet sometimes. Not all the times, but sometimes. Uh, another taming um, thing that I've always used um, with my monitors is um, when they show aggression, of course you don't want to force them to bite you, but when they show aggression, if they're opening their mouths, if they're small enough and you're willing to take a bite from a monitor, let them bite you. Let them bite you one time real good and let them know that it's not going to deter you, that, that, that it just doesn't work for them. Um, usually, in my experience, every time I've done it, and I've done it every, with every monitor I've ever owned, every time I've done that, um, that was the last time um, that they bit me. Um, well, I guess I haven't done it with all my monitors, but uh, yeah. It didn't work so well with one of my iguanas either, but anyways, um, it, it works for me for the most part. And if you're worried about, especially if you got a bigger monitor like this guy, uh, he's probably pushing four feet, close to four feet anyways. Um, you might not want to take a bite from him on the bare hand because he will do some serious damage. Uh, they got extremely powerful jaws. So throw a welding glove on and if you're worried about not being able to get them off your hand because sometimes these guys are like pit bulls, they'll latch on, throw some bitter apple spray on there. Um, this is this has worked for me um, quite a few times in the past. A welding glove, if it's a bigger monitor, a welding glove and um, some bitter apple spray. Um, and you'll usually, almost every time, you'll get a bite and release, a quick bite and release, and that'll be the last time that they try to bite you. Um, it, for me, it doesn't work as great with the, uh, the bigger monitors, um, uh, simply because you've got that glove on, and it's not the same thing as your hand. So if you're starting out with a young monitor, and he's showing some aggression, and you're trying to break him of, of the biting part of it, they're probably always going to tail whip um, until you get him you know, real tame. Um, but with the biting, let him bite you. If it's a small monitor, he may... I, I did it with Loki, um, and yeah, I bled a lot. It was a pretty good cut, but, um, and it, it didn't feel good, obviously. Um, he sat there and he chewed on me, because I, I don't like to use the, the bitter apple on my bare hands if I'm going to do, you know, the bite thing. Um, but yeah, he bit on, and he held on, and he chewed, and he squeezed, and I just left my, my knuckle in his, in his mouth, and, uh, that was the last time he ever bit me, so it works pretty good. I don't think uh, I thank God I don't need to do it with with him, but uh, I don't think that I would bare hand a uh, monitor bite from a monitor this size. He could do some real damage. He snapped off. I have bamboo feeding tongs, and he snapped off the tips of of all of them so far. So he's got a pretty powerful bite. Um, another thing I like to do is um, tong feed. You know. A lot of times I'll fill this this bowl up here with king worms and I'll feed him every single one one by one with tongs. Um, I did that in the beginning when I first got him and it paid off big time and quickly so tong feed your animals um, they're feeder bugs they're feeder insects and it will build some trust. Um, let's see what else do I like to do. Like I said in the beginning, time. Spend a lot of time with your with your monitors. Um, make sure that time is positive for them. Um, you know, let them see you working in their cage, do a change in their water. Um, take their hide out. If they go into their hide when you go to change their water, take the hide out first. Let them see you changing the water. Now you're the water guy. <laughs> uh, do whatever it is that, that you think works um, and let me know what works for you guys. Post a vid. I'll take a look at it and... Um, yeah, let me know what you think of this. Thanks, guys.